Hello again everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it musical chairs because I think the stock market is basically a high stakes game of musical chairs. And when the music stops, this thing is just going to collapse. Uh, we've stretched the rubber band very, very far. It doesn't, you have to look very far to, to see all the different valuation methods. Every time I turn around, there's another example of something. I came across this today. Yeah, he titled this tweet, Dirt Cheap, he's being extremely cynical because it's an average of four different valuation measures. And uh, the average is showing where it was in 1929 and 2000 and where we are now. Uh, you know, you just can't get much more extreme than where we are now. And there are lots and lots of other measures that are sending the same message. But short term, the market continues to want to trend to the upside. So that's fine. Uh, as long as, you know, in this game of musical chairs, that you know exactly how you're going to handle uh, what your exit plan is, that if it hits your uncle point, that you're going to honor your uncle point and you're truly going to get out. Uh, so I'm just, you know, I throw that out there just because I think you honestly... If you're going to be trading or investing at this point in time, you need to be ready to be able to pull the plug. OK, and right now, I mean, it, the market doesn't want to collapse and we it's having every opportunity. I still think it could, but it has it, to me right now, if you had to say which way is it trending, it's trending to the upside. And it's very obvious that it's trending to the upside. Is it getting stretched? Yes. All right, so here's what happened on Friday, up 179 points, up 227 points for the week. When we look at the SPX, same kind of move. After Thursday, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, you had it looked like it could just fall right out of bed and collapse, but it didn't. It popped back up. Now we'll see if there's any follow through to this. So far, this hasn't taken out the all-time high. But we're only a couple of points away, and here's what it did for the week. When we look at the NASDAQ 100, it's a similar type scenario. It could have fallen out of bed and had the follow through after Thursday, but it didn't, and it came back. And we continue to trend up here on the, on the weekly chart. You know, the, the Russell 2000, it's basically been chopping sideways. It's not nearly as close to an all-time high as the Dow and the S&P is, but it won't take very much. Uh, to continue to push to the upside. And it looks like it wants to do the same doggone thing. So it is what it is. There are stocks that want to go up. There are stocks that want to go down. And yeah, I play them both ways. <laughs> and, you know, I don't have any problem with playing to the downside and I don't have any problem with playing to the upside. All right, so we're going to, let's take a look at the Elliott Wave picture. Uh, here is the bearish view. The bearish view says, that we had the high on May 10th here and that we had a strong first move down and that we had a uh, what looks like an expanded flat type move for wave two. And then we're looking for a wave three to come on down. And we thought we were starting to get that this week. But then look what happened on Friday. Now, Friday hasn't invalidated this scenario, but because of its refusal to break down when it's had every opportunity to do that, you could also say that here's the bullish scenario, that in reality, that May 10th high was Manu Wave 3, that we extended Wave 3 higher, and that we just completed Wave 4 here with the May 19th low, and that we are pushing higher in five more waves. So in this scenario, if we continue to push higher, do I think that, you know, we have a couple more years of bull run? No, I do not. I'm looking at the wave structure in here that could be weeks, maybe months away. Are we talking about a July high? Are we talking about an August high? You know, we can, you know, you know that various major market peaks that have peaked in that kind of time frame. Uh, you know, 1929 was the first week of September. 1987 was the end of, of August. 2000 uh, was March and was January, March. Uh, so, you know, and then when you look at 2007, it peaked, had a strong peak in mid-July, and then the all-time high was actually achieved in like the first week of October. So you're never quite sure when you're going to get that peak, 
But right now, if we're looking at the kind of, uh, you know, the timing of what we got in here, if we continue to push higher, then I think we've got just a few more little wave structures to, uh, to lay out, and then that'll be it. So that's where we're at. All right, so let's take a look at um, a couple of indicators. Let's look at the McClellan Oscillator. And before I do that, let me just give you a little plug in here. If you'd like more of this kind of information, head over to joehenches.net right here uh, and check out the website and check out the, uh, the membership. We talk about these kinds of things every day. Uh, we walk through the whole scenarios. All right, so let's take a look at that McClellan Oscillator. Let me pull that up. So right now we're slightly overbought, I would put it, at plus 93. If you get above one, plus 150, you're extremely overbought. Uh, we've broken out of this trend line, which was an indication of a push higher in here. So right now, are we going to continue pushing to the upside? We may. Right when I, Like I just talked about, it seems to want to do that. We had the ability, we, we fell out of bed, but then quickly rebounded. And when was this? This was May 12th, so middle of May. And it just, it didn't stay down there. It didn't chop around like what happened in uh, March of uh, 2020. Okay, so it quickly bounced back, and now we are where we are. Now, the other thing that I notice when I look at the summation index, the summation index is a cumulative of the McClellan Oscillator. And I look at this to watch to see if it starts to break down and roll over. And so far, it just keeps holding. Okay, Every time you think it's going to break down, it doesn't. It just stays higher. So here's the breakdown that occurred last year, you know, late February into, into March. And then you break below zero. This is a zero line. And so right now, you know, it just keeps doing these little cycle waves a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and basically pushing sideways. And I'd have to say pushing sideways over the last three months. So we're not really seeing any breakdown there. That's another thing that just kind of says to me, well, the market wants to uh, continue to nudge higher. So that's the, uh, that's the short term direction. When I look at the percent of stocks above their 50 day moving average, when I look at the S&P 500, um, you know, here's the 50 level, 50% 50 of the stocks in the, in the, in the S&P 500. Right now, they're at about 73%. And, you know, it's really interesting that, you know, we came down and we bounced back up. When we look at the percent of stocks on the New York, it's actually held pretty well also. I mean, it's up over 70%. And it's basically just oscillated sideways. We've never got a, a breakdown. We, we never went down below the 50 level uh, on either one of these, at least, you know, since November. You know, and since, well, let's just talk about the, the move down that we had in January. So for this year, we've tested it several times, and so far it's held. And it's the same thing with the... Um, well, I guess it broke it on the on the uh, S and P five hundred. Broke it in, at the end of January, but uh, so far it's held up. So we take a look at this, we monitor it just to see if it's showing us any kind of pattern, uh, any kind of significant weakness. Is it deviating? Uh, you know uh, that type of thing. All right, I want to take a look at three stocks this week. I'm going to look at three electric vehicle stocks and actually a couple of them I am tracking on a regular basis. Let me let me pull that up. First I want to start off here with uh, NIO which is a uh, Chinese electric vehicle stock and right now to me this looks like it wants to head a higher. I'm leaning into the scenario that says I think that we've completed a fourth corrective wave, a big a, B, C flat in here, and that the C wave is finished. And actually, I think I can get rid of get rid of that. I don't need to show that on uh, ongoing. There we go. That way, I can highlight it and highlight other things. I think we had a five wave move down that's finished. And it's been very strong since this low on May 13th. Very strong in the push to the upside. Now we'll see. Again, we're looking for five waves, and you can see how choppy it can get on you as you continue to push higher. But so far, it seems to be breaking that way. Um, let's take a look at. I want to look at um, 
QuantumScape. Now, this stock is a battery technology type of stock. And, uh, you know, some of these stocks have got a lot of, um, I don't know, story, uh, stories around them, a lot of skepticism, whatever. The volume on this is just uh, tremendous. I, I mean, it's just, you can see, I mean, we had uh, 9.6 million shares traded on Friday, but I mean, the average volume on this, this thing has been very high. Uh, so right now, I think it's uh, after this big move higher that peaked here in, at the, in December 22nd, I think we had a big corrective move. And when you look at wave two as a percent of wave one, and I think this was one of those SPACs that went public. I think that's where this uh, this big gap in the trading and what happened in, with that, although I haven't looked back and looked at the history in detail, but I think that's what happened back in here. I think that there's a good chance that this was completed and it's trying to push and getting ready to push to the upside. So I'm watching this one pretty close too. Um, and then the last one we'll take a look at is Xping, which is another Chinese uh, electric vehicle stock. Now, QuantumScape, I don't believe was a Chinese stock. I think it's uh, based here in the United States, um, but double check that. But uh, Xping is definitely a Chinese stock. Uh, Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer. It too has had a tremendous wave two pullback, very deep. And if you look at this as a percent two versus one, that's even deeper. I mean, it's like, wow. I mean, it came all the way back down, had a lot of gaps in here on the push to the upside. But it also looks like it's broken out. And uh, let me get rid of that. Uh, but it's really hard. It, it just it's not giving you very much in terms of corrective uh, type of moves in here. Uh, and, and we're looking at a daily chart. And so that's just the kind of price action we're getting right now. Uh, so, again, at some point you're going to get a wave two pullback. And then it's just a matter of to what degree. But it looks to me like it is off and trying to do a third move to the upside. That's what I'd be looking for in here. All right, so those are just some thoughts, some things that are moving around. These have definitely had some pretty strong moves coming off of mid-May lows. So NEO, QuantumScape, Xping, um, Xping Incorporated, I guess, is the actual title for it. So that's it for this video. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And again, if you'd like more of that kind of, this kind of information on a regular basis, head over to johenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.